He's Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host, NBC Football Night, America analyst, former NFL quarterback. How vulnerable are the Chiefs this year? Uh, I mean, I, I think they're more vulnerable than last year in some ways, right? I mean, their record was worse last year at this point. We were having some of the same questions, right? So it was the same type of stuff. But I think the difference this year is there's two things. The defense is not as good as last year. That, that I've been trying to tell people that for the last few weeks on my podcast and things like that to go, you don't see as many playmaking uh, chaos, mess the play up type plays from people in the front seven, Chris Jones, Nick Bolden, whoever it may be. The biggest thing, Dan, is there's no Legereus Sneed, right? Last year, they had maybe two of the three top corners in football on the same team. So they could have go, hey, you guys get on an island and we'll do whatever we want with the nine other guys. The other aspect of it is injuries on the offensive side of the ball. And this time last year, we saw Rasheed Rice starting to go trend upwards and go, ooh, he could be a guy here for the future. I don't see anybody like that in their offense right now where I go, oh, this guy, watch out. I think Xavier Worthy is far off from that. And really, Dan, 40 years of like football intuition – I, I I would go, there's no way they're going to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl this year, except the fact that they kind of did this last year and had the horrible Christmas Day game. And it's the only thing that makes me hesitate saying it. But yeah, my overall body of football life wants to say, no, they're not going to do this, Dan. They are vulnerable. And I said this earlier in the show, they're vulnerable until the final two minutes when Mahomes has the ball and then you're vulnerable. Well, they're, they're, they have a great cut just about them. And because of their Super Bowl wins and so many other big wins, they just what, – what's pressure after you've won the Super Bowl the way they have a few times, right? Oh, no, it's regular season game number 11. Oh, no, we're down to Carolina. Ooh, that's pressure. So they're not going to buckle under any of that. And, yeah, right now they kind of play a brand of football. And I talked to other coaches in football about this. Just keep it close. Keep it close and give 15 the ball late in the game, and you're going to lose. And that's what scares everybody in the NFL right now. Belichick was on the Manning cast, and he says so many things almost under his breath. He doesn't have any big proclamations, any big pronouncements. He's he's just talking about it. it's kind of meaningless to have a spy on Lamar Jackson because the spy is not as athletic as Lamar Jackson. So why bother? I mean, it's really simple when you think about it. Like, oh, we're going to spy him. Well, if the spy can't stop Lamar Jackson, why have a spy on Lamar Jackson? Right. Well, you got to have the right personnel. Now, I'll say to Bill Belichick and counterpoint that, right, we just saw the week before Lamar Jackson, he couldn't scramble or run or do anything against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He had a few, like, design quarterback runs off the edge where he got some, some yardage, certainly. But he couldn't, he couldn't leave the pocket and make those magic Lamar plays. Why was that one? They know how to play him and rush him. But two, to Belichick's point, they have a guy in Patrick Queen who is really fast and explosive to, oh, I'm going to kind of spy him. And as soon as Lamar gets out of the pocket, I'm going to be all over him. And he's not going to buy five more seconds throwing the football. So, yeah, you're going to have special personnel for the most part. But more times than not, yeah, a lot of teams aren't going to have that guy. And you got to just have guys with the underneath coverage that have eyes on them so they can rally and tackle and get to them. Feels like Jim Harbaugh needs a couple of years to bring what he wants to bring to the Chargers. You're seeing it. It's the embryonic stages. But it's almost as if they feel like they've overachieved a little bit, in my opinion. Because, well, they, now my expectations weren't great this year just because I didn't think they had the weapons. And I think he wants to have that Michigan feel to the Chargers. But right. what is your takeaway from what you've seen with the Chargers? I like the Chargers. I do. Uh, I, I, in fact, I really enjoy watching their style of football play. But I, I think you kind of hit on it. They, they were, they're old school. And we're seeing this right now. The new thing in the NFL is run the ball and play action. That, that's The best offenses are doing that. It's the death of the spread and all that. So, yes, he's bringing that there. I like everything about them. They're physical. They're tough. They got a lot of the right pieces. They're just missing what I always call like sizzle, right? The meat and potatoes are there. but they need a few more difference makers. Like you said, another splash receiver to go along the group. They probably need, they're going to need to get a running back. That's big time. If they want to play that style, probably another D lineman. Most people can't name their D tackles and their DNs. We know are coming to the end of their career, but man, I, I think he's laid the framework down. 
I understand what you're saying. I think new energy of Harbaugh, people kind of trying to figure out Greg Roman's new wrinkles, and then, of course, what they're doing on defense has probably caught some teams by surprise. But I think they're a playoff team, and I think they're a playoff team that can win a game if they get in there. They could be dangerous that way. Harbaugh reminds me of Ted Lasso. Like, he's <laughs> he's goofy. Ted Lasso is a character, created character. Harbaugh is not a, a character that's created. That's just Harbaugh. <laughs> it is. Have he's you, a, he's crazy in a good way. Uh, he, you know, he, he is, and and like he's he's all about football. His social skills are different, definitely. I think I've told the story before. He made me mad once when I went and interviewed him at the San Francisco 49ers. He didn't like one of the questions I asked, and he dropped the mic and said, tell your dad I said hi and walked away. <laughs> and I called him a jerk for about five years after that and all that. But, you know, as time goes by, you forgive, and I was around him a few times, and I feel like he was aware of that. And he's tried to be cordial, but he is a pretty damn good guy. He's just football. I got a chance to hang out with him at the Super Bowl in the hotel for a little while, and he couldn't have been better to my family and my mom and my aunt and all that. But he can't not talk football. Yeah, there's not a lot of like other, you know, roads of conversation. Yeah, but you didn't call him. A, you didn't call him a jerk to his face, though. No, no, I didn't call him a jerk to his. But I called it on camera, and you know, I, and I rooted <laughs> against him for a little while. So I'm sure he heard some of that at some point. Do you think you could take Jim Harbaugh? Yes, I do. Right now, 100%. In his prime, I don't know about that. In his prime, that would have been something for sure. He was uh, a tough SOB. How do <laughs> you – How do you? I don't know what to make out about this John Gruden maybe coaching again. Would the Jets be interested? And you know how these things get started. Somebody will say, hey, speculation or rumor or innuendo, then it becomes sort of a report-ish. I don't know if you and Florio on Pro Football Talk have – spoken about Gruden coming back and could you see him maybe with the Jets? I, 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 we have not spoke about it. I've heard some of those rumors. I haven't heard any of those rumors from people that I am really close with in the NFL, Dan. That's where I would go with that. And the other thing too, like, I mean, come on. What, what the Jets want to cause those problems and now have people talking about John Gruden and the issues that go along with that. There's a lot of good candidates out there right now. If I'm the New York Jets, I am calling Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel, the Giants or the Jets, if the Giants job comes open, is where I start. Mike Vrabel's made for New York. He's Bill Parcells Jr., and he will get that organization back on track. That would be my number one guy. Yeah, I just wonder. I had Albert Breer on last hour, and we were speculating, like, what is the best opening or potential opening? I know Chicago is not open. I still just love that possibility because of that quarterback. And I think you have some pieces in place there. They should be better. Now you're playing in the, yes. the toughest division. And I don't know what's happened to Trevor Lawrence. You could speak to that better than I can from a quarterbacking perspective. I, I mean, I don't know if he lo just lost confidence or like, where is he? Is he a franchise quarterback? Is he a top 10 quarterback? He, he's, you know, I would say right now, probably not. No, he's not a top 10 quarterback. He's not that. He's on the outside looking in. But a guy that, like, has the talent and potential to be there, we've seen moments of it. That's where, you're like, you're not going to – I'm not going to give up on Trevor Lawrence. You know, we can't forget he's been a part of some bad situations. We can't forget two years ago he brought a team back from 27 nothing in a wild card game and then had the Chiefs on the ropes in the AFC Divisional game. Yeah. So he's shown us extended periods of time. Now, yeah, there's other things there that are not great supporting him, and he has definitely gotten to some bad habits. There's no doubt about that, Dan. You're right about that. Chicago is the prettier job to me. Chicago's got a lot of young talent, and I, that quarterback, I know it's been a little all over the place, but he does things that make my eyes pop out of my head times where I'm like, oh, my gosh, that throw, that move, that run was insanity in the membranity. Uh, that would be the job I'd want. And if I was Ben Johnson, I'd be looking at Chicago hard. He's Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and contributor to Football Night in America. Give me the scenario how Saquon can win the MVP. Well, um, uh, he does what he did uh, the other <laughs> night like three more times. Uh, is that good enough for you? I mean, he, he's a freak show. This is why football is so brutal. Saquon Barkley's a first ballot Hall of Famer type talent, and he's been on a crap team his whole career, and he's never gotten to show what he can really do. And now he's with a team that can show can show us all, and he's special. He continues to do that. He flirts with 2,000, 
right? The, the Eagles are the number one seed. Uh, Lamar's the guy right now to me, but Saquon and Josh Allen are, are not far behind. Yeah, I've been on the Josh Allen bandwagon for a while. I just, and it almost feels like there's less pressure on him. Yeah. Because, oh, they don't have Stefan Diggs. They had all the injuries, defense, you know, and, and, but he has played really, really well. It's just his game, his season comes down to, what happens against Kansas City? Lamar's season comes down to what happens against Kansas City. And I did bring this up earlier. Who has more pressure on them this year? If I said Patrick Mahomes three-peat, Kyle Shanahan winning a Super Bowl, or Lamar Jackson going to a Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I, I hear you there. I, I think it's Lamar. I do. I mean, there's. No, I'm not trying to take away or take off the pressure of the other two guys, but to me, Lamar and, and Josh Allen, I think those two guys have more pressure on them than anybody in football. Josh Allen, as you said at first off, is a freak show. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks we've ever seen in our lives. The team now is finally there. Like, this is different. Let me just say, when they play Kansas City next time, it's not, I, I, if you, I'm a betting man, I'm going to take Buffalo. I will. Buffalo is a different team than the years past. Their O-line gives Kansas City issues. They got enough heat at receiver now to where, oh, you want to play man-to-man, watch out. And the defense has some size. Lamar, you're right about that. I mean, of course he's got pressure there. He's got, what, two playoff wins in his career? And we're talking about one of the most talented guys ever. So I I think it's those two guys that have the most pressure. They've been playing phenomenal football, that's for sure. Great to talk to you as always. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. And Thanks, uh, Dan. You know, next time you stop in at your local dispensary, if you want to stop into the studio, we'd love to have you. I, oh, all right. Well, I'll let you know. The dispensary moved closer to me, so oh. I don't go up that way as much anymore. So sorry about that, but happy Thanksgiving <laughs> Wait, to all so you guys. So you're such a good customer, the dispensary moved closer to you? I hope that's why they did it. They were probably like, damn, this guy spent so much money. Let's open up a store there. <laughs> does your dad go to the dispensary? <laughs> no, he does not. No, he does not. He's He makes fun of me for going to the dispensary so much. <laughs> does he understand it? <laughs> he does. He does understand it. Okay. Totally. I mean, yes, he's, 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 you know, my dad. So, of course, he understands it. <laughs> Thank you, bud. <laughs> All right, man. Be good. That's Chris Sims, Pro Football Talk Live co-host and Football Night in America.